Hey, what's up, guys? I'd like to welcome you guys to the first episode of Building a Brand podcast series with Jeremy Patton. And uh, in this podcast series, we are going to be talking about a wide variety of different business topics. There's going to be a theme for the day, and we're going to break down that theme and analyze how we could uh, connect that thing to the business world, how we could apply it to our business ventures or our ventures as far as our goals and dreams. We will apply it to a real world society and how it impacts how the world operates and how the business and how employees and employers uh, work together and how they interact. Uh, we will talk about real world business examples and how successful businesses have uh, started, how they have evolved over time, and how we can approach some of these different industries with our business ventures. One thing that a lot of people ask is what kind of business should they start? How can they start a business? And there are so many different industries and there's so many different avenues. There's so many different pathways into business itself. I think that oftentimes because there's such a vast variety of different options to go into, we tend to psych ourselves out or we tend to limit ourselves to what is right in front of us without realizing or looking at what is in front of us. For example, if you are watching this video podcast series, or even if you're not watching, look around you. Everything around you is a business. This microphone is a business. The camera, the phone that is recording, the audio, the video is a business. The stand for my camera, the computer that I am going to adjust the audio and the video is a business. The chair that I'm sitting on, the desk, the TV, the monitor, the keyboard, the mouse, the lights, the fixtures that hold, or the light fixtures, everything is a business. This building is a business. Everything hanging on my wall is a business. From plaques to the my diploma, uh, everything is a business, right? And so we have to look at everything on the road being a potential business that you could get into. There are different resources, there's different and wholesalers that sell products that have high quality, but they don't have, or they aren't owned by a name brand company. So you could buy these products at wholesale price and then resell them for yourself and, gen and create a genuine business under your name or under the name that you create for that business. And you could function that as a business. And essentially everything is a business. If you have a skill or a trade, if you have uh, some kind of expert knowledge in, in anything really, you could package it and offer it to someone that needs that service or that needs whatever product or knowledge that you have and you could turn that into a business. So we'll talk about, like I said, real world examples of successful companies and how they got started. Because oftentimes we look at these companies and we don't realize that they have been in business for 30, 40, 50 years, if not more. And they had times where, where business was not where what it is known as today. They've had the same times where they doubted their business or that their business would succeed. They had times where nobody believed in their business. They had times where they were operating in the negative or in the red 
for multiple years until they were able to turn around their business and it into the profit. So we'll go through some of those businesses, some of those examples, uh, and talk about them periodically. Now, uh, I want to break down who I am. My name is Jeremy Patton, as I said earlier. Uh, all my life, I worked in various industries, most recently in the manufacturing industry. And I realized that there was a glass ceiling no matter where I went. I always have been told by my peers, I've always been told by, by management or by outside personnel that I am like exceeding my job expectations and I, and I go above and beyond. And for whatever reason, everywhere I went, there was a glass ceiling there. And I would go above and beyond every single day and every opportunity to advance in the various companies that I worked for, that glass ceiling always reappeared and never allowed me to get through. Uh, a lot of people, or I'm sure some people would say, you know, stick with it, you know, your time will come. My thing is when, you know, there's only so much that so many rejections that you could take where it's where you have to reanalyze things and you have to decide is this really what i want to do for the rest of my life or how long do i want to put up with this i got to a point in my job where i was getting passed up repeatedly for positions that i qualified for and i would get passed up for by somebody that wasn't as qualified as me or somebody that didn't even work for the company that they brought in from the outside. And then they would bring them in and bring them to me to have me train them in what we do and what they would have to do in their new role. Uh, and it was a continuous cycle. It was something that occurred over and over and over again. And I got to the point where I was done begging for a chance or opportunity to grow within the company that I worked for. I started looking for outside positions and roles. And I found myself being passed up for positions that they said I was overqualified for or for positions that I would go through a series of different interviews and they would tell me, you know, one reason or another that I didn't get the job. But the interviews, each interview, in my opinion or in my eyes, were successful. I walked out of one interview where the department manager and the plant manager both told me that I would be receiving an offer letter within the next couple of days. And the HR person, I had to beg him to even get the interview, even though their company outsourced them, uh, and recruited me for the interview and for this position. The, again, the department manager and the plant manager told me that I had everything uh, that they desired for that position and then some, and told me that I would be getting a offer letter within the next couple of days and then the recruiter reached out to me and said that the HR personnel put a block to it. And from there, that was pretty much the last straw. Like I, at that point in time, I knew that I needed to go into business for myself. I wasn't too sure what kind of business I would go into, but I knew right then and there that I needed to find an avenue into the business world and go into business for myself. Well, I came up with the t-shirt concept and I looked into how to make custom-made t-shirts. And so I started a t-shirt company that makes custom-made t-shirts. And during that process of registering my company 
and looking into what it takes to actually start a company and operate a company, I realized that information was so sporadic, it was all over the place. You had to go to at least 10 different resources that had the various information and you had to sort of piece together a puzzle. Seeing this, I realized that it could be a deterrent for anybody that wants to go into business that doesn't have the patience or that drive to go to all these different resources for this information. And from there, I decided that I would start making videos that documented my process as far as my research, as far as me building up this company. And I got a lot of positive feedback. I got a lot of people that inquired about assistance in their personal situation and wanted answers that, you know, that they weren't able to find. And I tried to help out as many people as I could, but the problem was I was still working my nine to five job and I didn't have that free wiggle room or time to sit down with anybody to really genuinely help them. Nor did I have the systems in place. So a lot of times, I remember one time, there was a lady that reached out to me asking me for assistance and her only availability was when I was at work. And so I would have to take off of work or try to work her into my 15 minute break or my lunch break to help her out and to sit down and talk to her. And for whatever reason, for whatever reason, our schedules never aligned and we were never able to sit down and talk. And so I realized that there, I had to put those systems in place. I had to uh, make my schedule available, put everything online. Um, and that way I could help out whoever needed help. One person I helped out, they asked me, you know, how can I pay you? You know, how much do you charge? And I told her, look, buy a t-shirt. Like, I don't charge for this. Like, buy a t-shirt. It wasn't until different business owners that have been operating their business for multiple years started coming to me, telling me that they like my content or that, you know, they were, they were following me or, you know, that they would watch my content, see what I would put out so that they would know or have an idea of what they should be putting out. And these are people that have been in business for years be before me. And this, is, this happened months after I started. So not only do I have people coming up to me asking for assistance and service specifically to their needs, but I also have multiple business owners coming up to me telling me how good my content is and that they're, and some even tell me that they are copying my content. And this kind of showed me that there is an avenue or that there is a, there's a business behind what it is that I'm doing. You know, the name Builder and Brand with Jeremy Patton started off as a simple YouTube name. Like, that was the name of my YouTube channel, of my free content that I was just going to, I was sharing with the world, uh, you know, just because of my experience trying to find that information. But after getting people offering me money for it, after getting experienced business owners telling me that they're copying some of the things that I'm doing, I realized that I legit have something going for myself. I have a business on my hands. Like I have a legitimate business beyond the t-shirt business that's bigger than the t-shirt business that I can cultivate, I can perfect my craft and I could offer it to the world. And so that's where we are today, right? several books later um i always had the mindset or the idea of starting a podcast uh now 
I wasn't sure what or how it was going to be structured. Uh, I wasn't sure how I would bring it into fruition. Uh, so I started researching podcasters and I started researching and listening to the various podcasts. And I learned from a wide variety of people, you know, and I took notes and I literally, I joined different online uh, podcast platforms, especially on Facebook. There's a whole bunch of different podcast groups on Facebook with people that have been doing this for years. And I asked them different questions and I looked into the different topics that were that were spoken and that were common. And I took notes and I implemented some of those things. Some of them I have not been able to. Some of them as I grow, I will expand and I will improve on. But that's in time, right? Now, I am super excited about this because the idea or the goal of this is to bring awareness to business, to bring awareness to real world issues that a lot of the working class is experiencing. And I say the working class, and I say that with a sense of authority because I am and I consider myself to be a part of the working class. I've been working all my life full time since I was 16 years old. I worked in all types of different industries. I worked in so many different positions. I've gone into a lot of companies at the very bottom and worked my way up as far as I could. Um, through different departments, through different roles, and each role, each department, I never had an issue with learning and operating within. And hence why I was able to move up and move around quickly through different departments, through different uh, positions, and work my way up to various levels of you know, hierarchy within the company. Um, and so, again, I want to kind of bridge that gap between the working class and entrepreneurship. I want to shine a light on how you can still work your nine to five, but also pursue your dreams, still start your company, still go into business for yourself, operate around your nine to five hours and find a way to generate extra income because that's something else that a lot of people don't realize. Most working class people, they are living paycheck to paycheck and oftentimes have to work multiple jobs just to meet ends meet. And if you could cut back one full-time job or one job where you're working 30 hours and you could focus some of that time to something that you're passionate about or something that doesn't take as much uh, strain from you as an individual, then you are alleviating some of your stresses in life. If you're working paycheck to paycheck work by, and you have one full-time job, or let's say if you have one job that's part-time but you're begging for extra hours, you go into business for yourself, find a way to generate any amount of income or revenue, and you'll be able to alleviate some of those stresses that come in today's world, in today's society. And so that's something that I am going to heavily focus on, how to take a business idea, plan it out, and go into business for yourself while you're still working your job and how to plan out scaling that business to the point where you're able to step away from your nine to five job and hopefully take on your business full time and work your business and have that take over the income that you're receiving from your nine to five.
So we'll talk about some of those things, some of those transition things that you would have to consider as well. Um, the dates, right now I am going to aim to release an episode every Monday. Um, for now, every Monday. Um, in time, I would like to start releasing possibly two or three episodes, but I'm going to, uh, I don't want to overcommit, especially as I'm starting off. Um, so I think once every week is definitely doable. I know I can do it. I'm going to push myself to do it. And so every Monday I will release an episode um, until I'm able to scale my episode production up and do it more frequently. Um, I want to welcome any suggestions, any questions, anything like that. I always offer and I always welcome suggestions. I always offer and welcome feedback. If you have any particular questions or if there's a particular topic that you would like me to cover, then that is something that you can request. Either I will cover it over uh, this podcast series or on my YouTube channel. Um, and I'll find a way to integrate the one or the other. So if there's something that's requested on my YouTube channel, I'll find a way to integrate it on my podcast series. If there's something that somebody inquires or on uh, my podcast series, then I'll find a way to integrate it on my YouTube channel. The, and I'll use whichever platform is most appropriate for whatever the question is. It might be a quick question. It might be something that I have to dedicate a whole episode to. So depending on what it is, like I said, I will uh, find a way to integrate it. Now, um, with that being said, I am, again, Jeremy Patton, and this is Building a Brand, the podcast series. I appreciate anybody that is listening. I appreciate all support. I appreciate all feedback. This is uh, something that I'm super excited about. It's been something that has been a long time in the making and it is something that is only, only going to expand and get better. I have, you know, I'm going to take notes. I'm going to, you know, be and, you know, attentive to the comments and suggestions. And I will, you know, I will implement different things to make whether it's the audio quality better, the video quality, the, the tone of the podcast better, uh, you know, whatever the case is, we are only going to improve from here. So I appreciate you all very much. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. And until next time, have a wonderful, exciting, and informative day. Deuces.